Hello, my Walking with Jesus friends. When you want to encourage someone with a blessing, I wonder what words you use. In the Jewish world, there's a very special word often used in a wide range of circumstances, shalom. Almost always the recipient of that word of blessing smiles, is deeply touched, and returns a blessing in some way. Have you ever had someone say that special word to you? How did you feel? As we rejoin the Apostle Peter today, he is writing the first few lines of his first letter of encouragement and instruction to first-century Christians living in very difficult times. Peter writes these words, Grace and peace be yours in abundance. 1 Peter 1.2 That, my friends, is the essence of shalom, at least for me. With these words, Peter is requesting God to shower his grace and his peace upon these dear but persecuted, oppressed, harassed Christians. And Peter is urging these dear people, living in very, very difficult circumstances, to fix their hearts and their minds on the wonderful, unchanging truths about Almighty God, their Heavenly Father, who is all-powerful and all-knowing, holy and always loving. Peter is echoing the words Paul wrote to the Colossian Christians, Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Have you noticed, my friends, how the focus of your heart and mind directly affects every part of your life, your attitudes, and your choices? So how different would your life be today and for the rest of your life if every day you focused on living in the assurance of God's grace and peace being poured into your life by the Holy Spirit? Do you see how this could push back the darkness of discouragement and doubt and despair that we are surrounded with no matter where you and I live in this world? Peter now leans over the parchments, ready to get practical with his readers. Peter knows and has personally experienced the pressure, the opposition from many as he has tried to be faithful to his Lord Jesus and honoring in every aspect of his life to his Heavenly Father. Peter writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. 1 Peter 1, three. As you can tell, my friends, each of the writing apostles often repeated the importance of the relationship between Jesus Christ and Almighty God. Do you see the phrase, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ? There can be no confusion, no mistake, no doubt. Jesus Christ is God the Son, the Son of God. Jesus the Christ is fully God, and through his incarnation, Jesus is fully man, yet without any sin. The relationship between Jesus Christ, God the Son, and God the Father is essential to our Christian faith. Father and Son are inseparable. Jesus is now, in his glorified, resurrected body, at the right hand of the throne of God in heaven, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 34, and Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. From that exalted place, Jesus is interceding for God's people and saving completely all those who come to him in full faith and repentance of their sin, according to Hebrews 7.25. Jesus ascended from earth to that place in heaven 40 days after his resurrection from the dead. In so doing, Jesus was returning to his glory in heaven from which he had come when God the Father sent Jesus, God the Son, to earth to accomplish God's redemption plan and become our Savior. Did you get all that, my friends? As Peter wrote the next line, In his great mercy, God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I imagine Peter's heart nearly exploded with joy. Do you remember what the word mercy means? It's a legal term, and it means a guilty person does not receive the just punishment they deserve, for the judge has declared that the punishment is to be withheld. 
You and I and every person deserve a horrible punishment for our rejection of God and our living in sinful association with the devil. We deserve both death, the ending of our earthly life, and what God calls perish, which is eternal separation from God in hell. But God, in his great mercy, is willing to not pour out that punishment on us during our earthly lifetime. Why? It's not because we deserve God's leniency due to anything we have done or any amount of money we have paid. Oh no, my friends, God pours out his mercy on sinful humans only because his precious son Jesus has paid the full punishment price through his atonement death on the cross. Now watch this, friends. God can extend mercy to you, me, or any person even if we do not acknowledge or accept the payment of Jesus on our behalf, even if we reject the notion that Jesus died in our place, even if we want nothing to do with Jesus or God. What? How is that possible? Romans 5.8 says, God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. God's love, God's mercy, is poured out on sinful humanity all during their lifetime, regardless of their response to God. But when our earthly journey ends, then comes the day of judgment, according to Hebrews 9.27. In that judgment, the holy justice of God will be accomplished without exception. For those people who have fully trusted in the death of Jesus to pay for their sin, that mercy of God is fully realized, and they are declared fully forgiven of their sin as the payment of Jesus is applied fully to their sin, and they are invited into an eternity with God in sinless heaven. But for those who have rejected God's plan, rejected the death of Jesus, when they stand in judgment, their sin remains, and the mercy of God, which had been extended to them all during their earthly lifetime, is no longer available to them. The death payment of Jesus is not applied to their sin in that judgment moment, and God's mercy is withdrawn. They stand now accountable for their sin, and they are escorted into that place of eternal torment far away from God as their just eternal destiny. Now, friends, be careful here. Peter is assuring us the remarkable mercy of God is available to us all during our lifetime here on earth. God does not send anyone to hell. Everyone who ends up in hell with Satan has chosen that eternal destiny by refusing God's mercy, God's offer of salvation, and the atonement sacrifice of Jesus. Mercy does not exist in hell. That is the place of eternal justice punishment reserved for those who choose separation from God, those who reject Jesus and all he has accomplished in his death on the cross. That, my friends, is the balance between mercy and justice. This leaves us with a vital question. What are you doing today with the mercy God is extending to you? Please give that serious thought, my friends, and I'd urge you to spend some time talking with God about these very important truths Peter was writing, and I'll meet you right back here tomorrow for more.